Hi guys, and welcome back to World of Warships with Onyachi. Today, they've done it. It's here. We are looking at the British light cruisers. World of Warships have released a new patch, and they have added the entire light cruiser line. There we see, starting off with the Black Swan, and working all the way up to the Minotaur. So, I'm just going to talk you through these new cruisers, let you see what they're like stats wise as you can see I'm up to tier 4 so far and show you they are different to every other kind of cruiser currently in the game so if we just have a look we oh yeah sorry I had to say we start off with the black swan at tier 1 which is about the same as any other tier 1 in the game with only one difference but that difference is through all the other cruise lines the only thing that is different to that is the premium tier 7 but we'll talk about that in a minute so here we are first at tier 2 with the Weymouth this is a World War 1 vintage cruiser and you can sort of tell by these guns in the little side turrets which is quite common for tier 1 2 and 3 cruisers in the game I meaning you can never fire them all at the same target but you can at least get some on each side so if we have a look at it Got 20,300 hit points, 152mm guns, firing out to a range of 10.7 kilometers, rubbish anti aircraft defense, and a speed of 26 knots, which is pretty quick for a cruiser of this tier, and surface detectability of 10.3. Now, because the artillery fires a little bit further, you can just about fire from cover, but it has to. Um, you'll lose your cover as you go. Now armour wise, it's only a tier 2, it's got 10mm of armour plating all over it, and if we have a look here, we've got the Citadel, there, and oh, a little superstructure, but yeah, the Citadel on the British ships, as you will see if I just get rid of all the extra plating, that is the Citadel. As you can see, it is very low to the water. It is quite difficult to get citadel penetrations on these. You'll get they don't have much armor, so you'll get lots of full damage armor piercing hits, but it's very unlikely to get citadels because it's so low to the water line. But if you're facing this, if you shoot it along that line there, that's where you're most likely to get citadel, but the armor there is sloped. And down there, that's all underwater, so you're not going to get it with your guns. Now this sort of low citadel placement does continue up the British cruise lines. Some of them are a bit higher than others, but others are about the same. So if we now look at the Caledon, as you can see there, as a much larger citadel, it is higher up out of the water, but most of it is still below the water line down here. Which, yes, can be got by torpedoes, but is not going to be got by your normal shells but as you can see there isn't any additional armor plating over the sides of the citadel it is only the citadel armor itself which is 76 millimeters isn't bad for a tier 3 but it's not going to stop any high caliber shells so if we take a look we've actually got slightly less hit points than the tier 2 as you can see here 1300 less at 19,000 but you'll see why in a short while now, you've got the same 152mm guns, all mounted centrally this time, with a firing range of 11.8km. But, from tier 3 up, you get torpedoes, and they're reasonably good. Quite slow at tier 3, but 6km range isn't bad. You've got 4 double launchers, and they do, I think, 10,000 damage each. Yeah, maximum damage of 10,000 which isn't bad for a tier 3 cruiser and this thing is relatively fast so you see there it's got a top speed of 29 knots and a very quick rudder shift time and can be spotted by sea at just over 10 kilometers which again means you can fire an initial salvo off from cover the moon up to tier 4 we now move up to 30 knots speed Again, spotable from around about just over 10 kilometers. 
Artillery, once again, it says 152mm shells, but this time we've got a range of gone up to 12.5km. So, hit points, we're now back up at over 20,000 with 20,900. But again, I'll show you why there is that lower hit point pool than you might expect. And once again, most of the citadel is situated below the waterline. But again, the section that is above the waterline does not have any additional armour plating other than its outer citadel armour. But now, we're going to look at the thing that makes the British light cruisers different to all of the others. Down here at tier 3, you can see you only get armour piercing shells. And the only cruiser in the British Light Cruiser line that doesn't only get arm piercing is the Tier 7 Premium. Which also gets a smoke screen generator, but eh, it's a premium, what are you going to do? Now this continues up through all of them. You see, you only get arm piercing shells, and at Tier 3, just your standard repair consumable. Sorry, Tier 2. But from Tier 3, you get a repair party. Which is good, because you've basically got no armour. But that means you can actually go around and recover some of the health you have lost during the batch. You only get two charges of it, unless you have the resident re relevant captain's skill, which gives you an additional charge. But this does allow you to add some of your health back. And then at tier 4, you get the hydroacoustic search consumable as well, allowing you to spot those pesky torpedoes sooner. And with a 5.6 second run shift time, you'll be able to avoid them. Unfortunately, I can't see what upgrades the Emerald has, as I haven't quite unlocked it yet. But that will be coming in a video quite soon. So yeah, that's just a quick look at Tier 1 to 4. And as you can see, they are all pretty similar ships, same sort of guns, no armour. But yeah, as you can see there, the Caledon does have a slightly better survivability rating than the Weymouth, but that is because of the um, repair party consumable, and there we go, the Danae's torpedoes, very similar to the Caledons, but little faster, and being tier 4, they do do almost 12,000 damage each. But that's enough for the garage look, let's get into a game and see how this thing plays. So this is my first match in the Danai, however you pronounce it. Stations. So I'm not 100% sure how to play these cruisers yet, as you might guess from my stats and captain abilities. I used up my free experience to jump straight up to tier 4, rather than doing the grind tier 1, 2, 3, etc. I played one match in the tier 1, and then used free experience up to tier 4. Now I'm not going to head off straight away full throttle because this thing doesn't really have any armour. So I'm just going to hang around here at half throttle, well half steam, however you want to say it, and just wait for, well I've got the marble head there so I think I'll, I think I'll stick with him, He's a relatively good light type cruiser. So I'm going to go around wherever he goes, I'll go. And the team is splitting up. Which, as it turns out, is going to be a bit of a bad plan. But I can't blame them. <laughs> Looks like a reasonable 50 50 split at this point. I can't really blame the guys for splitting. Had they known where the enemy was going to turn up, I'm sure they'd have all come steaming down this side with us. And there's the first person spotted. As you can see, he's in range of me. I have not been spotted yet. Second target up. First one disappears. He's out of direct line of fire. Shots coming in at the marble head, and I'm still not detected. Still cruising up here, and finally briefly detected there. And then went out of line of sight. Detected again. It turns out there is a destroyer up there who is doing spotting. A slight panic there when torpedoes suddenly appeared very close up front to me. Oh, that Phoenix appears to be slowing down. So put a couple of shots out. I think he's going to slow down and reverse. 
and my shots, even at the bottom, are just completely struggling. So far off all my barrels, and I get a couple of their penetrations, which is minimal damage. They are only 152mm guns, but when firing at light to cruise, if you don't hit the centre of the ship, you are very likely to over penetrate the bow or stern armour. Let's see, oh, torpedoes coming in there, and you can see just how quickly this thing can swing around to get out of the way of torpedoes. In fact, this is going to prove very useful to me very shortly. Not so much for dodging torpedoes, but you'll see what I mean. As pretty much the entire enemy team is now sat up there in front of me, and firing my guns has left me spotted. Gave those a little bit too much lead. So, just to fire slightly. Just miss with all of those. Fired most of those into that headland. And that bounced up well. Didn't bounce, but didn't penetrate a bit. And there is now fire coming up. And quite a bit of lead. Thankfully, I mean, the battleship fire did miss. And again. But I'm looking at this guy, you know what? I'm not, I'm not fighting all these guys. There's only four of us over here. I've got no armor. The three ships down to me. I'm getting out of here. Now, unfortunately, there was a little bit of a few glitches here for some reason. I did keep having a slight stutter in the recording. The frames per second did keep dropping. It's probably just because it's a brand new patch and the servers are a little bit. At the moment, so it's not quite really as smooth as it was. Really Love a few more shots out of that battleship. As you can see, the travel time is really not that bad. But again, that has probably hit the casement armor and the deep penetrates at all. And I am now the furthest ship forwards. So I'm in a new light cruiser, so everyone's shooting me, and there we go. That was a citadel from the rear by one of those battleships. And I'm suddenly at hot health. So I've had enough of this. I am getting out of here. That's another citadel. So yeah, I I, I don't I don't want to play here anymore. There's far too many other people shooting at me pretty much so. So I'm gonna put the maneuverability of this thing to good use. And just watch how much fire it doesn't hit. Not counting the stuff that falls short. Okay, I got clipped there. But that's falling short. So many shots in that period where I decided, you know, I'm getting out of here. I didn't take that many hits, but I've still ended up on less than a quarter health. But thankfully, I'm now not spotted anymore. Fire a few shots out of that way, hope to hit that ground the turn, but still didn't get spotted. Which is always nice. And of course, complete miss. And just got briefly spotted again, so. Well, not so briefly spotted, but he's sort of right on the edge of my detection range for me. Starting to actually get some shots hitting him, which is, of course, obvious. Some standard armor piercing hits because the damage does start to mount up quite quickly, even though I don't have access to high explosives. A few hundred damage. I'm going to keep lobbing shots at this guy for now. You should never have to worry about switching armor types in this game. Mayday, mayday, mayday. He's going evasive, so I'm probably not going to get many more hits on him. But hey, that's what I'm trying to do. Better to shoot at him at the moment. And then he gets sitting at the And I could have got a kill there, but I missed. So. I decide I'm going to leave those guys to it. There's absolutely no point in turning around at this point. Because if I do, I'm just going to go back in range of all those guys. And I am not going to survive. So I'm 
looking here to see if I can lob some shots over at that guy, but unfortunately the headland is in the way from the aiming, even though he is in range. And I'm not very good at my blind firing, so I'm very much down to be able to get it over the top and rely on hitting. But I know there's a couple of cruisers, I think, on the other side of that island. In fact, I believe they're about to get spotted very shortly. As the smoke screen in front of me stops providing cover for my allies who are up there. And there's that battle shield again. There's no way my torpedoes will ever bring the ship. Too much of a risk of firing past the ships. We see there's a couple of cruisers up there who have been spotted now, or three of them. Who are heading this way? But I'm going to see if I can put some shots into this guy first. So, he's in the turn. I've been spotted. But he's duking the back of the forts as best he can. And send a couple of speculative torpedo shots, uh, salvos over there. And start unloading with 152 mm guns. And even though he's relatively well angled, I do actually get to try to hit. I don't really do any damage, but on my first salvo, something did hit. Something. The next lot, pretty much, I'm going to have to the country. So try to get more. And I do actually get a penetrating hit, and then one of my torpedoes slams home. And I do cause a little bit of flooding damage before he repairs it. going in there, I think that's going to be a good strike from that side. And then he gets taken out by top of the Unfortunately, I do get hit again. And I am now on perilously low health, and I do not have a repair party left. You only get two charges of it. And there's two cruisers up here. So this probably isn't going to go well. I'm already lead. spotted. fish in the water, and I'm just going to wait and see if I can do any damage. And that was a nice hit. This is what these cruisers are quite good for. They are very good at the light level of cruisers. As long as you don't get hit, they've got good rates of fire, and enough penetration to someone with me who I think was tier 5 but wasn't really paying attention but we've lost this we only have one battleship and an aircraft carrier left so we're going to skip ahead to the inevitable defeat and take a look at the results okay so here we are now I came top half of the team which I don't think is too bad not that far behind our best player little shy of 40,000 damage but I'm running a premium account so I came out as you can see there, I did a reasonable amount with main battery guns but most of the damage was the torpedoes, they are not entirely rubbish but if we have a look at credits and XP I'm running a premium account but this thing is quite a nice little credit maker came out with 106,000 credits 68,000 even if I hadn't been running a premium account which isn't bad for a loss and managed to get something for my commander as well. So there we are. That's the first quick look at the new British light cruiser line. I hope you enjoyed the video. Take care and I'll catch you next time.